What's going on everybody? C4 here today and I'm going to be addressing the top dilemma for the Philadelphia Eagles for the upcoming season. That is the cornerback spot. If you've been following anything about training camp, our corners are getting beat like a drum by shit wide receivers. Nelson Aguilar, the likes, fucking Shelton Gibson dropped. Like you're just hearing every day Patrick Robinson who was, you know, kind of brought in to be our veteran starter getting burned in practice. Jalen Mills is still working his working his way out. Sidney Jones might not be able, might not play this whole year. I'm optimistic and hoping he'll be back by midseason. But we need to talk about the 10 potential options Philadelphia can look for at the cornerback spot. I have all 10 here, as well as kind of their availability. Because all 10 of these names, I'm not saying all 10 of these guys are potentially, like Philly, if they want them, they can go get them kind of thing. But they're names that maybe if Howie, who's one of the better, I would say, negotiators and contract guys in the business, wants them bad enough, these teams may be willing to talk business. So we're going to try our best. And then as well, obviously we got to mention some free agents and stuff like that. So at number 10, we're starting with Darrell Rebus, who is a free agent last year in 2016 with the Jets. Six, uh, 15 games started, one interception, five pass deflections. I mean, debatably was the worst starting corner last year in the NFL. But looking at his career path, maybe it was just a bad team. He needs to have a better defense around him. You know, he, he kind of phased out there with the Bucks. Then he went to the Patriots and played well. And then went back, back to the Jets. And it's been downhill since there. So maybe coming to a team like Philly, which obviously not the strongest cornerback room. But everywhere else in the defense Philly has, they are a team. They have a playoff defense. Outside of the cornerback spot, Philadelphia's defense is a playoff caliber defense. No matter what way you look at it. So maybe we get the best little rebus. The way I see it, I'm pretty sure the Jets are on the hook for some of his contracts. So why not even bring him in just for a tryout and see what he can offer just get run through a goddamn you know strength and conditioning test to see where he is athletically and then go from there i can't see the any hiring whatsoever and bring in Darrell Reeves for availability we're giving him a 10 out of 10 moving on to number nine it's gonna be sam shields another free agent who was released by the green bay packers after really bad concussion problems so obviously the biggest thing with him would be getting a clean bill of health but the last time he played in 2015 with green bay 12 games started three interceptions and 13 pass deflections so again you know, yeah, you know, he's getting up there in age. Obviously, healthy. He has struggled to stay healthy with the Packers. But with 10 out of 10 availability, just bring him in for a goddamn trial and see what he still has left on the tire. You know, a lot of tread still left on the tire. We don't know. You're not going to know unless you bring him in. I don't see the harm there whatsoever. I'm seeing what Sam Shields can do. Going to number eight. We're talking about Marcus Williams on the New York Jets. 5'11, 192 pounds in his last two seasons with the Jets. Six starts, eight interceptions, and ten pass deflections. Uh, they put a recently a second round tender on him in free agency, so they definitely do value him. When you look at the Jets, I don't think there's too many players. You can probably count on one hand how many players on the Jets outside of rookies and new signings wouldn't be available for a trade because they are in all out rebuild mode trying to acquire as many picks as possible. And certainly looking at the Philadelphia Eagles, we have Michael Kendricks, who is our trade bait. Certainly a guy, you know, his contract is going to make it tough to probably sell on a lot of teams. But, sure, if you have linebacker depth, you're a 3-4, a 3-4 scheme. You might want to take a chance on him because he was, you know, only two years ago pretty damn good at the linebacker spot. Uh, so looking at Marcus Williams, he debatably could be behind Marcus um, Mo Claiborne and Buster Scrine there. So I'm going to put his availability at about a 4 out of 10 just because of the valuation. But certainly just because it's the Jets, they may be looking to try to acquire as many picks as humanly possible for the upcoming draft. I would definitely like Marcus Williams on the team. He's really pretty goddamn productive. Every time I watch the Jets play, which is not a whole lot, it seemed like he got an interception in that game. Going to number seven, it's going to be Parrish Cox, who is a free agent. He is 30 years old, so much like Darrell Rivas, a little bit of a veteran. I think Sam Shields is 29, so throw him in that mix. But in 2016 with Tennessee, nine games started, three interceptions, and 11 pass deflections. I'm not sure why he got released from Tennessee. I know he spent some time with Seattle near the end of the year, so maybe the stats aren't really telling you the whole story. He might have got beat a whole bunch and just got a couple lucky interceptions. I'm not exactly sure, but for those productive stats... I don't care who you are on Philly. That looks pretty damn good. I will take that at least to bring him in and try out and see if he can beat out fucking Patrick Rob. Like, you're telling me that versus what Patrick Robinson did, a.k.a. didn't do with the Colts. I think I got like Parrish Cox. Certainly worth bringing in for a tryout. 10 out of 10 availability as a free agent, and I would definitely not be against that. Going to number six, it's Steven Nelson of the Kansas City Chiefs. 5'10", 200 pounds, who, you know, not really the ideal build of an outside corner. But while we were talking about the draft and looking at the history of corners, Jim Swartz defenses or teams have drafted or signed in free agent. That is the build. 
you know, you really look at corners nowadays, it seems like everyone wants that six feet, six one, six two corner. But looking at Jim Swartz, he's consistently drafted guys that are between five nine and five eleven, under that six feet range. So that is where Steven Nelson fits. Obviously, you have the tie with you know Doug Pearson, Andy Reid. Maybe Andy Reid would like to move his third corner here, Steven Nelson, for Michael Kendricks. U upgrade his linebacker depth. Maybe look beyond the future for Derek Johnson there. Uh, in 14 games last year, Steven Nelson had 16 pass deflections, no interceptions, but it looks like he moved all over the place, played everywhere in the defensive back um, area. So safety, corner, nickel. So that, that is great availability for, you know, everywhere for Philly. You know, versatility. I'd give him 6 out of 10 overall availability just because of the ties between the Eagles and the Chiefs right now. Maybe Andy thinks he can, you know, rejuvenate Michael Kendricks and get him back to the form that he once was. I don't necessarily know, but... Uh, definitely a name to keep an eye on just in terms of depth and Doug Pearson maybe wanted to try to bring it another Kansas City Chief guy. Goal number five is going to be Jalen Collins on the Atlanta Falcons. In 2016, he started in six games, which was pretty much after Desmond Trufant went down. He had two interceptions and ten pass deflections. Now, in terms of talent, he's probably the second best corner we're going to talk about. But I had to put him at number five because I think it's going to have to be something remarkable to get him. I don't think he's untouchable. I, I definitely couldn't see Atlanta saying, no, he's not. He's off limits. But you have to really bring it in. Again, looking at our only trade piece in Michael Kendricks, you know, the only thing I could see that really would line him up with Dan Quinn in that defense is Dan Quinn really likes athletic linebackers. He's Deion Jones, Duke Riley, just named, you know, two of them. Michael Kendricks may still be one of the freakier athletic linebackers. Incredibly, incredibly fast. So he'd fit the style of the defense. Maybe not so much the scheme. You have to work around that. So definitely you'd have to throw in like a second round pick. Something crazy like that to be able to get Jalen Collins. It'd have to be pretty pricey. But personally with me, I like the size. He's 6'2", 200 pounds. Does, like I said, kind of negates the point. I was talking about Steven Nelson where he fits the size of a Jim Swartz cornerback. But I think in terms of talent and upside, Jalen Collins has plenty of it. Has the LSU ties. We love to get our LSU defenders. So I definitely would be on board with shipping out Michael Kendricks in the second rounder to get Jalen Collins if they're open to discussion. Goal number four is going to be Kyle Fuller on the Chicago Bears. Missed all of 2016, so in 2015 he started 16 games, two interceptions, and nine pass deflections. Uh, nine out of ten availability. He seems to be the hot name right now that the Bears may have on the trade block. Uh, you know, a lot of people are saying make the sweet trade. Kyle Fuller, Michael Kendricks. Michael Kendricks, I don't know really where really he'd fit on that Bears defense. Scheme fit, 3-4, but the Bears have two of the best starting middle linebackers at 3-4. And Danny Trevathan and Jarrell Freeman. So I don't really know where Michael Kendricks would make that in a straight swap. There are rumors that Kyle Fuller may eventually get cut, and maybe that's where we can make our opportunity to try to grab him. But in terms of a trade, I mean, certainly we'd probably have to get some picks in there, maybe a late-round pick if he's really deemed that expendable. But I'm saying right now, if the Kyle Fuller does get cut by the Bears and we don't make a play, I'm going to be pretty goddamn pissed off, I'm going to be completely honest with you. But that is a hot topic right now along the Eagle fans that we want to make that trade. And, you know, certainly on the downside, maybe, you know, you're hoping... Uh, optimistically that a fresh new scheme stuff like that could get the best out of Kyle Fuller because he looked pretty damn good as a rookie for the Bears but you know tamper your expectations just a little bit but I will say I am behind if we make a move to get Kyle Fuller 100%. Goal number three is going to be Tremaine Brock, free agent. 2016 with San Francisco, he started in 16 games. He had an interception and 14 pass deflections, 10 out of 10 availability, but he was a naughty man. He got uh, some off the field stuff. I haven't really done a deep dive into it, but it seems pretty serious. That's obviously why. I think it was like domestic, something domestic. Violence is always tough, so you have to get over the personal dilemma of bringing him in. Plus, if he does get reinstated, you might have to worry about suspension. But in terms of playmaking abilities, age is 28. Um, I think, you know, in terms of guys that you don't have to make an unrealistic trade for, he's probably the best available free agent at the cornerback spot. If you can handle all the baggage that's going to come with it, he definitely would be corner one on the Philadelphia Eagles this year. Going to number two, it's going to be Bradley Roby of the Denver Broncos. Uh, I didn't know he was actually this big. He's 5'11", 194. I thought he was much more, I thought he was like a 5'10", kind of compact nickel corner guy. But in 2016, he had four starts, uh, two interceptions. Both of those were pick sixes and 18 pass deflections. Uh, obviously, he's been a hot topic because he's well behind Aqib Tlaib and Chris Harris there in that secondary. So maybe he wants to make a move somewhere. Uh, I think he's heading into a contract year this year. So maybe, you know, Denver could be, you know, we're not going to be able to re-sign him. So maybe we try to trade him right now, get a pick, get a player. Michael Kendricks would definitely be a slight upgrade at the linebacker spot. At least a healthy name to add competition to the linebacker spot with the Denver Broncos. So a Kendricks trade would make sense. Uh, we'd have, definitely have to throw in a pick. Again, kind of like Jalen Collins, I would imagine a second round pick. And Michael Kendricks would probably be the starting price for Bradley Roby. That's a high price to pay. But again, man, you have to just... 
We have to do something with the cornerback spot. You're not going to fleece teams. It's not mad. You're not going to be able to offer them just fucking pennies on the dime and pennies on the dollar and try to get a goddamn good player with upside, especially a player that's still on a rookie deal versus getting a guy like Michael Kendricks, who certainly definitely has upside. Definitely, if I'm a team that's not an Eagles fan, I would look at last year and go, okay, kind of had a bad year. But there's maybe, a, you know, Kind of like how you're looking at Kyle Fuller. Other teams should be looking at Michael Kendricks if he tr and it is, in fact, on the trade block because he is so goddamn athletic and should be so much better. Maybe a different, like I said, different city, different team would be the best thing to use for Michael Kendricks. And, you know, obviously, Bradley Rowe, you're going to have to offer some things, though. You're not going to be a... I don't see a single player right now, if we're going to do the trading route, that you could go for Michael Kendricks head up. But Bradley Rowe, he's certainly near the top of the list. And number one is going to be Trumaine Johnson of the Rams. Uh, over the last two seasons with the Rams, he started in 28 games, so very healthy. Eight interceptions, 28 pass deflections, and there was rumors pretty much through the entire drafts process that he was on the available trade block because they don't really want to pay his contract. Now, you know, it's one of those things, availability puts him at number one because I do still think, even though he said he's not for sale, they, they, I, I think they're playing higher ball. I think if the right deal comes along, they will certainly do some business. In terms of talent, he's number one. In terms of how Philly can acquire him, that's going to be the toughest spot because his contract is massive. Certainly, if we flip Kendricks in the dead money, I'm not sure how the dead money would work out uh, flipping out that trade, but uh, he's definitely the most expensive option. So Philly, you know, I, I definitely would say looking at this from the outside, Contract-wise, it might not make a lot of sense, but then I have to say, Howie Roseman's the best contract guy in the business, and if there was a way that he said, okay, we can get Tremaine Johnson, he would make the salary cap work. I have no idea how he would do it, but he would make that motherfucker work. Probably would stop bullshitting around, get some half-crooked doctor to pass Ryan Matthews physical, and then we could cut him and get $4 million back a cap. That's probably how it would start, but I think Tremaine Johnson is the... You, know, you gotta really rush them out their feet. I think linebacking core, they have the 3-4 three, four, three, four there now with Wade Phillips. So Michael Kendricks would be a nice added competition there to the linebacking core. Debatably would probably end up starting there uh, with Alec Ogletree over Mark Barron. I think Mark Barron is the other guy they have there. Um, so, I mean, from a scheme fit going to the Rams, he may be appealing. But in terms of total talent, that, that's why we have Tremaine Johnson here. But let me know what you guys think about these available corners. I think I don't know if you can find a better list than what I came up with. Uh, even then, some people probably get shit on this list. But let me know what you guys think, especially Eagle fans. What the hell do you guys want to see happen at the cornerback spot for the Philadelphia Eagles? That'll do it for me here today, guys. Thank you for watching. This is your first time stopping by. This is the home of Philadelphia Eagles for the upcoming 2017-2018 season. So subscribe if you're brand new. Until next time, C4 Sam. Peace out.